We are rebuilding a Bose SoundLink Micro. This has been the waiting period, about four hours. The sealant has been allowed to cure. Temperature is perfect out. This is what it looks like, just to give you a visual of the exterior of it after that chewing up of the enclosure that resulted in needing to actually go back and fill in a lot of these gaps by hand to really make sure we had a close to an airtight seal as possible. And it looks like we probably have that, but we'll see when we test it. Let's power this on and run it before I reassemble the whole thing. I wanna make sure if it's working and there's not air leaking out and to give an indication if this is worth doing or not. So let's give it a shot. Oh, that's pretty good. Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty damn close to, if not exactly like it did before. Let's wait for the bass to come back in again. A little bit less of a, of a bass response, but it might be that I need to put this back together completely so that it's sitting on something and not vibrating off the bottom passive radiator, which might make the bass sound less pronounced. Let's put it back together again. Taking the enclosure, I'm going to fit it around this. Oh, I gotta get the, the strap through first. Okay, all I'm gonna do is just push this all back in here gently. I'm pretty sure if I jam the screwdriver in there, I could crack it all apart again. But the point of this video is to show that you can do this and it will survive being taken apart, losing those clips and being able to just use regular silicone sealant to put this all back together again, to reassemble it. So we got this back on here again. It looks, I mean, despite the nastiness of this around here, it fits in here nicely. It looks just like the other one. I mean, it's pretty awesome there. All I'm gonna do is grab it with just a, a spudger tool and fit the, these little pieces over. That's not the one I want. I want the other one. It's got the needle point and fit it over this like that. And I'm just gonna repeat this for all remaining seven little piers and then pushing this up to make sure that it all is snugly captured around the corners too. You don't want, cause it is silicon and if you don't get it captured around the corner, it's gonna look a little bulgy on the outside and won't look like it did before it was taken apart. There we go. And the last thing to do is to put the silicon cover over with that has the adhesive on it. And I'm just going to press that into place. Oh, two popped out. I was going to say that the adhesive that's placed down here should be strong enough to hold it in place. If not, you can find some of this stuff to peel this up and then replace it. It's it's not like specialty or anything. You just got to cut it to size. But I'm just going to press around here. There are little recesses where this kind of fits in to where each of those eight pillars are. And it will hold it in place as well as the adhesive. And so you just go around and make sure that that's that's all been pressed in. It may not feel like it's actually sticking and it's popping out, but if you work it around maybe two or three times, I'm pretty sure that you'll get it to hold it in place pretty well. And if not, then just get some more adhesive. Yeah, this one seems like it's not. I think it's because I it picked up so much debris when I was playing around with this whole thing. So I might need to get some two-way tape to test this right now. This will hold it in place while we do the test. It is kind of peeling back away from here. Let's listen to this one again now that it's been reassembled and it's actually sitting now on top of the strap and this little, these things that kind of hold it in place instead of it sitting directly on the passive radiator pushing air against the table. So let's take a listen. Switching back to the other one. I almost can't tell the difference. I mean, I, I know which one I took apart, so I might have a little bit of a bias and say this one's ever so slightly more muddy than this one, but it, it is back together. It is in one piece, but that's it. It's totally doable. You can replace the battery either with the module or the battery cell itself. And it seems like what I did with the sealant which acts as an adhesive, can totally reseal this to the point where you're not going to get whistling or weird vibrations or poor sound quality as compared to one that has not been opened. What I'm going to do now is use this speaker primarily for about 
it's probably going to be two weeks. Just to give it some time. And Basically, this is just looking at these both six months later. I'll play some music through them. The mid and high frequency response really won't be bothered by what was done to the SoundLink micro. It's really going to be the bass response and the mid bass response and to see if there's any kind of whistling or any of that that's going on. Before I get to that part, this has been six months since I made these modifications and the speakers have been used moderately. These don't really leave the house, but they're moved around and they're used in the bathroom. So it's a really high humidity, damp environment with some temperature extremes. They haven't been dropped or anything like that. So I still stand by after you make this modification, the speaker's gonna become more delicate since all those clips were removed. But the sound quality, I have not been able to discern a difference between the two. I'm gonna record this with the lavalier mic that I use. I actually don't remember which one is which now, but I'm pretty sure it is this one. Nope, it's this one. Yes, yeah, so if we pull off the back here and obviously the, I haven't taped this thing down, nor have I really felt the need to do that because um, it just kind of has stayed in place with the strap connected. If I remove this and pull this piece off, what I'll do is I'll just remove a couple of these loops. And as far as hours, I've, I'd say it's about 60 hours to 70 hours of usage, which is normal for what I would use this thing for. And let's just see how it looks. It's definitely, is it flexing a little bit? I don't think so. Let's see if I squeeze this, if it'll no, I don't see it. Oh, I'm pushing on this. There's a metal grill here behind this foam. And I think I'm pushing on this and it's actually flexing. That's the part that's flexing. So I move over here. No, it's not moving at all. Okay, cool. So that means that the, that the material, this Dynaflex 230, which is just whatever I had. It wasn't something that I had picked specifically for this. It does provide a pretty good seal for this. I do see a couple spots where I, it might have been good to add a little bit more sealant, but it doesn't really matter because I don't notice any whistling or any kind of sound degradation. So let's back out here again, put this one back together so that they both look as close to identical as possible. So to that the base is ever so slightly muddy on this speaker and this is the one that's been opened up it's barely perceptible and I would wonder if you listen to that without me saying anything if you'd even notice it so that's great that's great after six months of this thing being used kind of bumped around not it hasn't been dropped or anything like that so it's not like it's been through intense use but it's been through a lot of humidity cycling that's what I wanted really to be putting it through it's something as simple as this will work so that that's the tldr of all this is that it works 
it does modify the sound profile a little bit. Well, I don't know what happened there, but my camera just randomly stopped recording. So everything that I did with the frequency response stuff didn't get recorded. So I'm gonna use a frequency generator. I'm going to ramp at moderate volume up from 30 hertz to about 200 hertz. I'll do it on both speakers. And we'll see where at a moderate volume where the speaker cuts in and if we notice any sort of anomalies as it's cutting in. Now granted, this is not a perfect acoustic test. I'm just sitting at my desk here. But I will tell you if I hear anything that's strange. So here we go on the left speaker. And I'm gonna ramp it up. 40 hertz, 50 hertz, 60. I hear it coming in now. 70, 80. Cool. So now let's switch it over to the other speaker that's not been touched. 40. Ooh. 50. At 50, I can hear it very, very quietly. 60. So this does cut in, the one that has not been touched cuts in earlier at about 51, 52 hertz, and this one comes in pretty much on at 60. So I do feel like the modification of the, well obviously removing all of the clips in it to, to get inside, putting the elastomer sealant on it, that has caused it to have a, a different resonant frequency for the enclosure. And perhaps that's occurring at a much lower frequency. And at that lower frequency, you have the enclosure perhaps moving in a destructive interference pattern where it's actually causing it to just, you don't hear it. If that is of a concern to you and you're like, oh, I don't know if I wanna do this now because of that slight change in the bass response. One thing you could do, even though it's kind of a one-way trip, is to, instead of using the sealant first, you might consider using a plastic cement and then that will adhere the two pieces of plastic to each other. And then you could finish it up with something like a, an elastomer sealant to waterproof it and also keep air from getting in and out so you don't get any whistling or anything like that from perhaps a, there's just a little spot where the cement didn't make it in there. I'm pleased with this. I am satisfied with the, how this came out. It, uh, like I said, it's been six months, so it's definitely a length of time to be testing this and to have it work well. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing and leave a like or any comments that you might have regarding it. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.